Well, my friends, uh, I'm in the book of James today, as we were the last uh, the last visit we had with you. And let me say this, uh, we was talking about uh, people being healed and the correct order in the church uh, to go about it. Uh, and right here we have, uh, I didn't finish with verse 15, uh, the Lord went on to say in verse 15, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, if he have committed sins, now every sickness that we get is not directly because we have sinned. Sickness is in this earth because of the general condition of sin. Uh, uh, sin entered into the world and therefore death. And death it, it comes uh, when sicknesses and all this stuff that comes with it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, if every time you get sick, don't think, well, what is the sin that I have done? Uh, it may not be any sin that you have done. You may have a child who is not well, and it may not be a thing that you have done. As the Lord said in one situation, said this is to the glory of God that this child is this way. And uh, so do not think that every time that you're sick, that uh, it's because you have done some particular sin related to the matter. Uh, do not think that at all. Now, I guarantee you one thing. Uh, if you are sick because of some sin you've committed, you will know it. And you'll know exactly what it is. You'll know exactly what you've done. And uh, you, you'll understand that. The Holy Spirit will impress upon your heart and your soul and your mind uh, the sin that you've committed and the sickness that you might have from that. Well, if that be the case, if, if that be the case, notice the word if in verse 15. If he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Uh, if you will ask the Lord in the midst of your sickness to forgive you of that sin that you have done, uh, he says, they shall be forgiven. And you can be forgiven of that. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And sometimes the Lord will send sickness upon someone because of a particular sin that they have done. That's not the case at all every time somebody's sick. And if you hear somebody sick in your community, your family, your church, don't even try to play God and say, well, I know why. Uh, no, you, you don't know that at all. You just don't know that. Uh, and if you did, I don't know what good it would do you to know it. But nonetheless, we're told right here, if the sickness has come because of sin, uh, they shall be forgiven. If you're calling upon the Lord and asking for Him, uh, you can be forgiven. Verse 16 continues this thought. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And so if this is the case, that you've got sin in your life and you know that you're sick because of that. And I'd say that's, that's pretty rare. I would. I'd say that's pretty rare. I wouldn't think that's every time somebody gets a call for a sneeze or a virus that they have committed a sin, which is relevant to that. But if that be the case, verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And there is a period in that. Uh, James writes in pretty short sentences, unlike Paul, who writes sometimes a half a, a page in one sentence, but the, he makes it very plain. If you pray one for another, that you may be healed. Well, that's a promise of the Bible, uh, that we should do that. If we'll confess our faults uh, one to another and pray one for another, uh, that we could be healed. He says, verse, he goes on here to continue the thought. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, we're fixing to go. The subject changes a little bit right here. He's still talking about prayer. He's still concerned being healed. And he still is, is talking about uh, confess. Confess your faults one to another. And there is a time to do that. There is a time to confess one's faults. In our church, I've seen it done uh, one time in particular. Uh, a man came before the church and confessed his sin of adultery and asked the church to forgive him. And uh, I think we did. I think everybody was glad to do that and forward to do that. And the man's still in church today. His son, uh, his, his children come to our church. And uh, we appreciate him. I'm glad. I was so glad that he turned from the sin that he was in and uh, got right with God to the point that he came before the church and confessed what he had done and asked the church to forgive him. And, you know, I believe the church did forgive him. 
And I think the church respects that man as any, as much as anybody in it. Because one thing, he was humble enough to do that. Uh, he was uh, sincere enough before God to do that very thing. And uh, I think they uh, appreciate him and respect him as much or more as anybody else in the church. One thing for sure, he wasn't stuffed up with pride. But uh, we could talk for a long time about confessing our faults one to another and praying one for another that you may be healed. Now he goes on to say here, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know what that means? That means effectual fervent. That means red hot. Um, that means pour your soul into the prayer. That means uh, get your mind and your soul and your spirit into it. I mean, in a serious way. Uh, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And when we're praying about things, remember, uh, don't go mediocre. Don't go to the Lord thinking, Lord, if it be thy will. Uh, and I'll go to the Lord and ask Him. Ask Him in a serious way. And when you pray, whether it's confessing our sins, uh, do it sincerely. I mean red hot before the Lord. And uh, uh, do it as to where you know that you're doing some praying. Put your soul into it. Put your spirit into it. And uh, pray uh, effectually, fervently in prayer. And as if though you really meant business with God. And uh, your prayers are more apt to be answered because you're praying according to the Bible. He says, Of the righteous man availeth much. Sometimes don't go there thinking your prayer is not going to avail. Go to the Lord believing that your prayer will be heard. Uh, when you got young and says, Walk to stray from the Lord, you go there and pray that God will deal with them and draw them back into Him. Don't just take a lackadaisical attitude about the matter. You be serious about the matter. And pray with your heart and seek the Lord for that child who's walked astray, that He would uh, touch their hearts, touch their lives, and bring them back into His fellowship. Uh, whatever else the need may be, I use one illustration there. Many other situations could be used. Notice in verse 17, Elias, you know who that was? That's Elijah. Was a man subject to like passions as we are? And that's so true. He was. He is a man just like any of the rest of us. He was a prophet in the Old Testament in the times of the kings and uh, used of God. But we're told right here from James that he was a man just with passions just like we are. Uh, he knew what it was to war and battle the old flesh. No doubt we saw that in his life. Uh, we know what it was. He, he knew what it was to be hungry. He knew what it was to, for his faith to waver. We saw that in the life of Elijah. Uh, we have uh, we've seen all humanity in the life of Elijah. I love reading about Elijah. And when I turn back in the scripture and read about the old prophet, uh, how that he was used of God in a, in, a, in, a, in a whole nation that was disobedient and had turned away from the Lord, I think, my, what a man. And how great it was that he could be used of God. And how God had used him in a great and a mighty way. Well, he was a man just like you and I. And then we're, got, we're told right here, he prayed earnestly. Notice that word, earnestly, that it might not rain. Well, earnestly. He didn't just go there, mumble it out, said, Lord, uh, uh, cross my heart, hope to die, son, this business like this. Lord, now lay me down to sleep, stuff. No, he prayed earnestly. Uh, I mean, he really put his spirit into that. He put his soul into that prayer, that it might not rain. And he prayed that God shut up the heavens. And notice right here what happened. Verse 17, it says, And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Can you imagine that? Three years and six months. Uh, I'll tell you, Ahab and Jezebel, they're scrambling around. They killed a bunch of the prophets. And they was trying to find Elijah. They was wanting to kill him. Because they knew, they knew that he had prayed <clears throat> that the earth would hold up the rain for Three years and six months this went on. I mean, people were dying in this, uh, in this uh, uh, drought. Uh, crops were dying. <coughs> Cattle had died. <coughs> it was a very, very rough time. But Elijah had prayed this, uh, that it would turn the people of Israel back into the Lord God. Three years and six months. The Lord heard this man's prayer, and he answered this. Verse 18, And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. What about that? You know, uh, I would. We had people in America praying for our country like that. I would that I was more of one of them. Uh, that we'd turn from our wicked sins and we would call upon the Lord. 
And our day sin is so rampant, so bold, so brazen. Uh, they're not ashamed to lie. They're not ashamed to kill. They're not ashamed to steal. Uh, they don't care what they do to get their way. Uh, they, they don't care how debased they can be, uh, how terrible the lie that they tell, uh, how distorted they make the truth. Uh, they're, they're terrible. And uh, we ought to be praying uh, that the Lord would deal with us as to bring all people uh, back to a prayer and to bring all people back to at least a decent recognition of the Lord God and their lives that they're living before Him. And so, uh, and Elijah Elisha, Elijah prayed uh, that the heavens would hold, and they did. And the Bible says when he prayed again, the earth gave rain, and the earth, the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. What about that? That's something to think about, that he had that kind of power over his life, and he had that kind of power with God. <clears throat> We're told here, he is a man just like we are. If you look on now, verse 19, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, and that can happen. There are people who walk away from the truth, and uh, we're told right here, and one convert him. Let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Well, that's a great statement right here. There's a time to speak to somebody, uh, a word of encouragement, and sometimes maybe even a word of rebuke. And when someone has walked away from the truth and erred from the truth, I won't convert him. Let him know. That if you do that, uh, you, you saved a sinner uh, from a, a soul from death, and you're hiding a multitude of sins. It's a, it's a blessed thing when somebody sees they're wrong, realizes they're wrong. And I've done so myself various times. And, uh, and when we, we turn from those ways and turn to the Lord and call upon His name, uh, and it could it could just stop a soul from death, and it could just hide a multitude of sins uh, when we when we do that. And uh, <clears throat> I, we don't need to go sticking our nose in someone else's business and trifling with them all the time. But you'll know when there's time to speak to someone who's walked out of the way. Perhaps there's someone who's left your church. Perhaps there's someone whom you know is not in church. And it may be upon your heart to stop by one day. And you can speak a word of kindness. And perhaps even in a nice spirit, you might even uh, issue a rebuke to a sinful life. Uh, so done in the right way, I would hope. And uh, you might have, have a hand in that sinner uh, turning from his way and calling upon the Lord. And then uh, you might know someone in your community, in your family, who is not saved. Who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And you know what? You might be able uh, to tell them the truth of Jesus Christ and His love for them. How He died for them upon the cross. And you might save that soul from death. And uh, you might be the cause of that sinner calling upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you might hide a multitude of sins. And you might save somebody from having to stand before a holy and a righteous God give an account for a sinful life and then dying and going to a devil's hell. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you should call upon Him today while you still have time, while you still have life in your body, while you're still able to do so. He's coming back one day and uh, to this earth again and to receive His own to Himself. And then there'll be a thing called the Great Tribulation Period will set in on this earth for seven years. And then those who have heard the gospel and refuse to heed it, they'll be deceived. The Lord will send a great deception upon them that they might be damned. Don't play around with God, my friends. Ask Him today to save your soul.